first you have the floor. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. First of all, I would like to thank Arba Kokalari and her great team uh, for an amazing uh, cooperation. Uh, we showed that the European classical motto, Stronger Together, is really working. I would like to thank also all the members of the European Parliament who voted for, first for our report and then the final decisions during the last session in Strasbourg. When a member state exposes its citizens to violence, the protection must be guaranteed by the European Union. Gender-based violence is today's biggest unresolved daily problem in Europe. One in three women in the EU experience physical and or sexual violence overall around 62 million women. Violence affects every person and every family in Europe. Europeans have a right to expect that institutions and their representatives will do their best to ensure the proper protection against violence. The Istanbul Convention is recognized as the most effective tool for combating gender-based violence due to imposing concrete obligations on the signatories. The Convention is not about the ideology. The document is about providing an efficient protection for women. Therefore, as a co-rapporteurs Arba and me, we have put a strong pressure in order to finalize the process of the ratification as soon as possible. Over majority in the European Parliament supported our report and the decisions which we're working on. More than 40, 460 MEPs have supported the accession to the Istanbul Convention. The Council shall treat this result as a decisive signal coming directly from representatives of the European people. The EU's anti-violence awakening is happening right before our eyes. What is significant? The signal from the European Parliament has already caused a positive pro-women declarations. Last week, Prime Minister Ingrida Simonite announced that she wanted a ratification by Lithuania. In addition, President Petr Pavel sees no reason why the Czech Republic should not ratify the Istanbul Convention. I would like to wish the same courage to the conservative European governments, particularly to the Polish Prime Minister who has been bragging that women's life is one of the highest priority for his government. Mr. Morawiecki, do not be a hypocrite. If you truly care about women, your representatives shall vote for the Istanbul Convention. This is a matter of simply human sensitivity. The Russians are torturing, raping and killing women in Ukraine. And as a consequence, these inhuman and barbaric attacks cost women leaving their homes in Ukraine. The EU must protect every Ukrainian refugee, especially in the neighboring countries such as Hungary and Slovakia, which have not ratified the convention and they must do it as soon as possible. Anti-violence umbrella shall be open at the EU wide level. It will allow the convention standard will be binding in particular areas such as judicial cooperation in criminal matters, asylum and public administration. In practice, we will ensure more sufficient criminal procedures, but also training for people who are working in the judicial system. The matter of time demand uh, some extraordinary measures and determination. While Ukraine, during a wartime, was able to sign the convention, authoritarian Turkey decided to the withdraw. Right-wing populists must ask themselves which directions they are going to follow. Thank you for joining us today, and I'm looking forward for your questions. In the end, I would also uh, like to thank the Swedish presidency for the support and all the efforts. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Kohut. Ms. Kokalari, you have the floor. Thank you very much. I also want to uh, uh, thank everybody here uh, who are listening, both uh, physical and remotely, uh, on this press release. It was a historic vote that we had in the plenary session with uh, a huge support for the Istanbul Convention. And I would say I would like to agree with uh, uh, my co-rapporteur, Lukas Kohu, that we would not have made this historic step for the EU if we would not have not worked very, very closely together. Uh, uh, both as the biggest political groups in the European Parliament, that we we saw that we need to unite our common forces because the violence against women is uh, 
is a, a, a alarm alarmic uh, issue in uh, all member states of the EU where one third of women uh, in Europe have been um, uh, seen physical or sexual violence. But we also see that there are millions of women living afraid uh, of their perpetrators and they're not enjoying the basic fundamental rights that they have the right to do in the European Union in 2023, where police forces are not having the enough competences to put perpetrators uh, uh, behind bars. Uh, we have countries who are not taking serious these uh, serious crimes, and that we have also member states who want to attack women's rights by uh, saying that they either don't want to the Istanbul Convention to be part of their um, uh, national law, like we, like we saw the threats in in uh, by the Polish government, but also that we've seen that the Russian disinformation campaigns uh, to uh, attack European values has partly also been uh, something that they have used the Istanbul Convention to uh, um, and, and women's rights. So we need to stay strong together as the two political big, biggest political groups to say that we've uh, we have zero tolerance against violence against women, and that Europe goes from word to action. We talk about how serious these issues are, but Europe has not delivered until now. And that's why this vote, um, the ratification vote was so historic, because now for the first time, the European Union, the European institutions uh, will have uh, very strong tools that, that we've never had before to take these crimes very seriously. And we've done it together, and we've done it together with the Swedish presidency uh, in the council. So our common cooperation made this happen. And um, uh, when we saw the voting, uh, it was over four, 472 yes in the first vote uh, against uh, 62 no votes. And then the other vote, we had 464 uh, yes votes against 81 no votes. So it really shows uh, a huge support for the Istanbul Convention. And now our role is to see that this will be implemented properly. Uh, so all of those women who are living in fear, hiding from the perpetrators or those families to these victims can see that uh, things are going on the right path finally and that Europe delivers on women's right uh, for real. And we're not talking about it, but we're actually uh, doing something about it. So uh, that's all. And uh, I also look forward to uh, um, answer the questions that you have. Thank you both very much. So we can now take questions from journalists in the room and um, online. So please state your name and uh, media before asking your question. Um, are there any questions in the room? Yes. Hi, I'm Jovita Kiewnik from Polish Office of Deutsche Welle. And I would like to ask whether you already have any information on when uh, Council can decide whether to ratify uh, Istanbul Convention. And the second question, uh, do you expect some countries to be against it? And if so, which countries? Thank you. Uh, well, the, the information that we have in forehand right now is that the Council expect to ratify the Convention about uh, 1st of June, or that week uh, with 1st of June. We don't know exactly, um, so you have to ask them, but that's the information that we had, so it's very close. Uh, what we know is that last time when they had the ratification vote, before we had our ratification vote, was that it was a very good uh, qualified majority that voted in favor of the ratification. There were some countries against, but we also could see some movement in, in current countries that haven't still ratified the convention, that uh, they are more open to, to discuss it. So we expect that the ratification also will uh, be uh, positive um, on the 1st of June week. 
regarding the the second question i would like to answer that you know you can easily check the the list of the votes in the european parliament you can check in which countries these people are uh, in the governments uh, so you know we, we are talking also about the law and justice Prawe Sprawiedliwość party from poland which is a bad signal also for the potential third uh, um, uh, win in their elections in Poland, because then there will be a question about the, the withdrawal of the of the of the con- convention, probably in, in Poland, as as we know already, because the Prime Minister Morawiecki asked the Constitutional Tribunal about uh, about the legal aspects of of the Istanbul Convention in in Poland. And regarding the first question, I, I'm sure that Swedish presidency will rock on. Thank you both. Um, yes, a question there. Maciej Zakowski, uh, Radio Talk FM and uh, News 24 Television. If you don't know, I, I will ask the question in Polish because it helps me a lot uh, in my work later on. Pytanie jest o o, o państwa nadzieje, w jakim stopniu ta decyzja rzeczywiście poza presją polityczną spowoduje, że wszystkie państwa Unii Europejskiej ratyfikują konwencję. Pan poseł Łukasz Kochut mówił, że, że są dobre sygnały z Litwy i, i z Czech, ale czy, 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 czy jest nadzieja, żeby właśnie na przykład w takim państwie jak Węgry również ze względu na decyzję Rady ta konwencja była przyjęta? I drugie jest związane z tym pytanie, no jaka jest konsekwencja, czy na przykład te, faktu, że Unia Europejska ratyfikuje konwencję, czy wtedy na przykład właśnie polski rząd wspomniany też, właściwie będzie miał co najmniej utrudnione działania na rzecz wycofania się z konwencji stambulskiej. Thank you. Whichever one of you wishes. Okay, I was, as, as, you, as you mentioned already, uh, Lithuania and Czech Republic. Okay. In Polish? You want in Polish? Okay. E, no tak jak pan redaktor powiedział, e, przede wszystkim e, już są sygnały, bo i e, na Litwie i w, i w, i w Czechach e, ta dyskusja się rozpoczyna i też europosłowie, którzy tutaj występowali podczas tej debaty, mówili o tym właśnie, zwłaszcza z Republiki Czeskiej, że, że najwyższy, najwyższy czas, żeby właśnie w Czechach konwencja stambulska zaczęła obowiązywać, więc ja widzę pozytywne e, sygnały i myślę, że ta polityczna presja tutaj z Parlamentu Europejskiego, ona jest może niedoceniana z perspektywy polskiej, ale w Europie to działa po prostu i myślę, że w Polsce też będzie kiedyś e, działać. Mam nadzieję, że już po najbliższych wyborach parlamentarnych, jeśli chodzi o, o Węgry, tutaj sytuacja jest bardziej skomplikowana jak, jak zwykle, ale, ale też myślę, że jest kwestia po prostu zmiany władzy na Węgrzech, co myślę, że prędzej czy później stanie i Węgry także zostaną, przystąpią do, do, do konwencji um, stambulskiej. Yes, if I can uh, add on on that. Um, in our work we have both tried to uh, urge both that the EU itself uh, need to ratify the Istanbul Convention, but also that the all member states, also the remaining member states, uh, the six remaining member states should ratify the Istanbul Convention in their national law. What happens now is that the EU ratification will also put a very hard pressure on those remaining member states, because the ratification is applicable to those areas where EU has competence which also will uh, be part of, uh, you know, the EU is also part of, uh, is built up by the member states. So the pressure will be now both from Grevio, so that the European Union in all of our uh, EU competence, which includes legal competence, the police cooperation, anti-discrimination cooperation, gender equality issues, the EU institutions itself, will indirectly also spill over to uh, to those member states uh, and the EU Commission, which now will implement the Istanbul Convention, will also monitor all member states and also uh, make sure that they collect data 
about the situation on gender-based violence in all member states. So even if those countries have not yet ratified the Istanbul Convention, they will need to work with it partly because they're uh, part of the European Union and the EU laws that where the Istanbul Convention is now applicable, will be applicable. So, uh, and I think, and I hope in the long term, it will be even harder for them to resist uh, because we cannot continue to have a European Union where violence against women is not taken seriously. Uh, these are serious crimes. This is what it's all about. It's not any myths or something else. It's about m maintaining the basic fundamental freedoms and the rights of all of our citizens that they can, um, th when they are abused or uh, being killed or uh, raped, that the police forces do their job in all member states. Thank Regarding the, the second question about the, um, about the other countries uh, and, and if it will be easy to, to withdraw the convention now, well, for, from my perspective, it's also good for the next perspective for the countries which are applying for being a, a member of the European Parliament because there will be a huge political pressure also to to, to ratify the, the Istanbul Convention for countries like uh, North Macedonia or all, all the others from Balkans who, who are trying to be a member of the European Parliament. Ukraine showed the, showed the way. Thank you. Are there any other questions? No. I don't see any online either, so thank you all very much.